This is an introductory video for my second game of Narvik from the Europa series. I intend to um, talk about uh, my plans, the opening setup, and uh, just one or two comments about the game in relation to my experience from the first play I had. So you see here arrayed the um, forces and the map for a game of Narvik. Now I keep, I'm undecided about how to do lighting a perennial problem. You see you get a lot of glare if I do that, but maybe that is better, I don't know. Um, no, I'm going to leave that off for now, but comments if you prefer more lighting. I, this is the best I can do at the moment. Um, so I've already economised on the space required for this game in that um, these charts here are covering Sweden and a bit of Finland which are not needed in the Narvik game. That's the terrain effects chart, the German unit composition chart which is essentially holding boxes for divisions. Germans, as we remember, have one, two, three, four, five, so 12 divisions available for the invasion and a, a naval regiment, which might be a sort of escapees from sunk destroyers. Also on here, you have the uh, available um, airfield, air forces on the German airfields, so off map. And then here's what's called the staging area, whereby um, you put, you arrange your forces that are going to come in as a, um, boat transited reinforcements next turn. Now I've arranged, um, so this is the first turn, so I've, I've staged these, they will come in on turn two, that's for turn three, and that's for turn four. Um, just to remind you that um, the first turn, you actually is unstaged, but you can bring on 15 and 14 battalions in an assault wave and a follow-up wave. Essentially, a battalion works out, uh, 15 battalions works out at a whole division, maybe including um, a supply counter as well. Um, so for the next, for, so for the first three turns, I can only stage seven battalions. So that works out at um, a headquarters unit, for example, um, this regiment, which is three battalions, and then I, I've opted to bring in three supply for the first um two turns of reinforcements and uh, you can see bringing in some artillery here. Um, so uh, and I've also got the combat results table here. We do need more light don't we? But I also need to change the, um, to the filter mode on the camera. Okay uh, maybe I'll sort that out later. So bombing table air-to-air -air combat results table, combat results table, and here we have the Norwegian mobilization table, and then uh, the German player on his version of that, he has the sunk in transit table. So these units that come out from staging and also those first two attack waves can become sunk in transit on a die roll, depending how close they are, essentially, to Denmark and Germany. So these ones will only get sunk on a roll of six on the D6. One's landing here, here, sort of five, six, four, five, six, three, four, five, six. And over here I've got the uh, terrain key. So the terrain effects chart is separate from the key. Also got some extra information that I've jotted on turn record. Over here, can you see that? We have turn record chart victory point chart and here's the allied composition sheet so um these are for uh for the norwegians and allies they don't actually have divisional headquarters there's a more like regimental headquarters and even just um named headquarters groups for the norwegians and some for the british some for the french and one for the polish they also have Hatton Airfield, which is represented here. So 10 hexes away from here, 
down to five hexes away from here. We have the Shetland Islands here. There's a port you could possibly put um, a temporary air base. Uh, there. That's one of these counters, which could hold one um, uh, counter of, so one squadron of air forces. You also have a bomber command air base, which is 10 hexes, no, 18 hexes, sorry, from this part of uh, the map. And um, that's for certain reinforcements that don't uh, start at Hatton Field. Then you also have holding boxes for the aircraft carriers, Art Royal, Glorious, Furious, uh, and there's the Bomber Command um, little holding box. Um, so I've already consulted that. I, I just had the whole map out the first game, but you can see that sort of tidies it up. And then here, what we have are the German initial order of battle. And then there's the German reinforcement chart, which goes all the way up to turn two, turn 12. The game ends on turn 15. The Norwegian initial order of battle is only these units. Then we go to the Allied reinforcements chart. So that's British, French and um, Polish, as well as the Norwegian. More Allied reinforcements chart going all the way up to the last turn of the game. What you find here is that, for example, the Furious aircraft carrier comes in on turn two and then on turn three it is withdrawn. Then on turn six, sorry, on turn five, Glorious and Art Royal come on, turn six they're withdrawn. The Furious comes back and the others come back and go away like that. Then at the top of here we have Norwegian Armed Forces chart. So each, each section here is um, uh, the units that may be mobilizationed from this mobilization chart. So there's uh, 16 of those um, packets. Some, these color, these shaded in ones are already on the board. And essentially they randomly come on between two and seven every turn at various places. Like here is number 15. There is number 16 going all the way down to here where we have Four, six, two. So these are mobilization centers. If they're not captured by the Germans, then if I roll, say, two, that's column two, then one unit from these will come on at mobilization center two. So you can see that each mobilization center has between one and three units available for it. There's also a few more assets, like um, those are the group headquarters, um, and then we have sort of breakdown counters. Um, these arrow ones are for... Um, indicating which hex side a unit went into combat in. Um, so that's all of those. Um, now the Germans, on the initial order of battle, they have the 3rd Mountain Division, then the 69th, 163rd, 181st, 196th and 214th Infantry Divisions available. Some non-divisional assets so um, anti-aircraft, artillery, there's a rather large possible um, ice lake um, airfield and uh, some motorised units, plus all the Luftwaffe units which I've already put on the board. Then and we have other breakdown units here, supply counters, control of mobilisation centres, that's for the um, hex size entered for combat. And then these are hits which will come in useful when bombing air bases, ports, um, allied depots, and um, uh, boat counters. So that's the array of forces. Then we have the on map forces. Now, what I've actually done is I've set up all the Norwegian on map forces. Plus, I've put my first assault wave and my second assault wave on the map so I know what it's doing. So, in fact, what we have up here, uh, this is Narvik. Um, just to recap, the um, victory points, are, uh, victory conditions go like this. 1 to 50 victory points is decisive Germans. 51 to 100 victory points is marginal Germans. More than 101 victory points scored, it's allied to decisive allied. 
Now, how do you score victory points? Well, the Allies score 100 victory points if they, we'll do this one first, if they hold Narvik and all adjacent hexes at the end of the game. So um, this is worth 100 victory points to either side in that sense. So, But these are the only um, Norwegian starting forces there. We do have two mobilisation centres nearby and um, there's also a port here with some reinforcements coming via there. Um, what, uh, so within the first wave I have chosen, and it, this was fairly expensive, um, six light, lightened battalions of mountain infantry to be transported by boat, so that's all the way around here on the North Sea, up to here, and for a surprise assault on Narvik and the port next to Elsgardsmaden. Elsgardsmaden. So um, they will be hopefully landing at this hex. But on the first turn, the um, uh, the invasion turn, the uh, that boat transit landings uh, only fail on a six. So I roll for each of those. And on a six, they don't get there. So the hope there is that I have quite a heavy force, which is going to essentially hide itself in the hills and remain, and unless it can sort of hold on to those, and remain there until it's able to be reinforced from captured airfields out at this end of Norway. Because that was my experience of the last game. I had some units that hit, hid out right to the end of the game. They were actually too far away to threaten Narvik or, or have any control of it. So I'm bringing in a stronger force there now. Then um, we have... These units, uh, some of them are off map in the holding boxes. So, for example, um, that is the fifth headquarters on the left there. We've got a motorised battalion and a um, mountain battalion guarding Trondheim and the airfield that is next to it. Then the, um, I can't actually see them myself. So, this is the fifth infantry. Regiment holding box. So they've got some tra motorized transportation. They've got uh, attack, defense, movements, um, another mountain battalion, and they've got some uh, kind of unprepared artillery units there. If that unit gets captured, then um, the uh, Germans gain a supply counter and the um, Norwegians gain a kind of like a unit counter, one of these um so you can see it's kind of like a nominally artillery um battalion but it's really only the personnel and uh, various minor assets instead of so um i've chosen this game to leave trondheim alone in the first turn then um we have at the splendidly na named lillehammer um we have a light norwegian unit there we have the only Norwegian um, air squadron here from Gladiators. Then we have the second headquarters here, which has um, with it three transportation units. They can be captured or, or, or used, captured by the Germans or, or indeed used by the Norwegians. And we have their um, guards heavy machine gun units, which is quite a tough one to take out. They're guarding Oslo. We have those artillery stroke ammo dumps there we have another headquarters there we have another artillery dump there and uncoordinated assets then we have these um mountain unit there and a the headquarters there so there's there's not much that's the headquarters stuff there's not much on the board for the norwegians at the beginning of the invasion so um Six um, light battalions. I say light because um, you see there are two combat strength, five movement. Now, potentially, they could have been... Um, sorry, where am I? These counters, three and five. But um, then they would cost double the um, sort of transport capability to move them all the way up here. So I lighten them. They become weaker for the whole rest of the game. But then it's you can get more of them up there. Um, so then on the first wave, I am planning to land. This is at, apparently, according to um, 
clarification in the actual rule but that is a port although it's kind of just off this stream there so I'm planning to land them so that's a battalion that whole um, regiment there battalion battalion um, by sea that's the rest of the sea landed forces that I can so they will or won't get there depending on that d6 roll then on the first turn the um, uh, Germans are allowed to do a magnificent thing, which is to fly in and actually land planes on these airfields. First, you have to send in a, a unit. 50% chance it makes it. If it makes it, then it, then these ones following can, can land. So I've got three transports there, which is enough to land a whole battalion. Um, so that's the hope, is that they come in there. If they don't, I've I've keyed it that they've actually got enough movement so that then the planes that, that this one would be destroyed, but the other planes would go back to base. Then also doing the same. No, this isn't risky because this is um, not so risky because these are float planes, so they actually land in ports. So that port I'm hoping is taken. If not that, they'll land on this port or one of the ports that's taken, and they also will bring in a battalion. Um, then uh, these are trying to land there riskily, the same procedure as that. And these ones are actually bringing in parachutists. That's the limit of their um, ability to fly mission, fly back to base. So they'll land the parachutists there, which will take that airport first turn. So um, the, the idea, right, so that's that's my first attack wave. And then in the... Um, uh, 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 at the the end of the sequence of play, um, so reinforcements come in, and the movement you, you move the those attack waves by so units by boat and uh, and or on land, then you have air that try those air landings, any fighting, and then we have exploitation phase. In that phase, in this first turn, you get your second wave coming in. So these this is my second wave aiming to come in. To the ports here and then I will also be moving these are um, there's two airfields in Denmark here so um, those uh, squadrons are actually in um, on German airfields at the moment as represented by these hexes 13 hexes away from here in Hamburg but these will uh, stage up to here in the first turn they're not there at the beginning of the game that's just for my planning um, so essentially what I've done is um, from the German initial order of battle, the um, third mountain have uh, six battalions going up there in the first wave. Um, then um, on the fourth turn, the, the rest of the battalion will come up. So that's the um, headquarters and the artillery. So essentially those guys will be on their own. These guys will be coming up by boat here, and, and by then I'm planning that we've got to what, at least one, maybe three of these airfields, and we, then we can start staging folks up to there, or at least to Trondheim as a hop to there. Um, then um, on this side, um, you can see the, 60, oops, the 69th Division headquarters will be going in. So these are predominantly the 69th on this side of the inlet and on this side it is predominantly the 214th. So these units hopefully air landed here are from the 214th and uh, there's the paratroopers there. So the 69th division up here, 214th division up here and you can see the staging in the rest of the 214th because the rest of the 69th is coming in on this on the second attack wave not the second turn there's the 214th then that leaves us three whole divisions and non-divisional assets to bring as and well the divisional assets might well come in as soon as we've got an airfield because we've got um uh, companies there which you can bring one company per air counter so you need three air counters normally to bring a battalion but you can see we could get some nice 
um, two strength artillery assets there. Or we might have to bring in um, some anti-aircraft. I'm planning not because uh, uh, have I planned it? it? Yes, there. So um, bringing on turn one into Denmark Messerschmitt fighters as well as um, those, are those the dive bombers? No, uh, those are Junkers 88 strategic bombers. Pinnacles there. And so the idea is that um, if and when these air bases are taken, these Messerschmitts will immediately fly over to the mainland and they will take out any and all of the reinforcing Allied um, air uh, units coming in as reinforcements on the Norwegian turn on turn one. The Germans start the turn. So that's my overall plan. Now, the last game I landed, um, my initial evasion landed units here, here, and around here. What essentially happened was that these two sets had to go to ground, being hounded by. Um, to a greater or lesser degree by the Norwegians and then Allied reinforcements coming in later, the French around here, and I think, I can't remember, maybe it was Polish like that, I can't remember. Um, that was my decision which ones came away at, but, and then the ones here, they didn't get a um, an airfield, they took a long time to break out, and they didn't get an airfield to around turn five or six, something like that, and so that does destroyed the whole game for the Germans. They didn't get enough units in quick enough to move up and take these places. So it's difficult, you see, you these are mountainous areas. Mountain troops move at normal speed. Everyone else moves at half speed and battles at half efficiency and no motorized units can go through them. So you see what that effectively does is you have these narrow corridors. To Trondheim, there's two narrow corridors with your mountain troops zipping up in between. You can see there's a corridor up there. It looks like two, but one's blocked by a bit of mountain. There's no direct corridor to um, Stavanger here. That's Bergen. And then here's Christian Sand. That's okay. You've got some fl open plains coming up there. Um, so what happened was that um, they, the Germans were bottled up. They just made it up to Trondheim, but not in enough time to affect anything near a win. So I can't remember the level of victory, but it wasn't, it might be an Allied margin or just on, the Germans were starting to pound the Allies and they took victory point losses on units being destroyed. But it was too little too late. Um, so this game, this time round, I thought, right, um, I did toy with staying off Narvik altogether and maybe landing forces in Trondheim initially and around here, and then um, aiming to take this a lot quicker, so being a little bit more risky than I was, and pushing up a lot more determinedly, and then when I had this secured to take Narvik. Point being is that there's, um, there's Trondheim, there's Alessand here's a port, there's Bergen, there's uh, Stavanger and there's Christian Sand. They all have, and Oslo and around there, they all have to be taken by the Germans or the Allies get another 100 victory points. So um, you've got 100 victory points here and 100 victory points there. Uh, I, I, what I'm aiming to do essentially now is to, you can see, I didn't do these daring landings. I did one of them. I've done two of them and then I've bring in these and I'm doing the air landing. I held these off. Um, the uh, paratroop units, I'm, I'm, they, they might die, they might all die, they, they are expendable, They're, that is what, I need these airfields is the key, um, and I need to, to move out with the airfields, then I can be bringing boats in by transit, you see the first three turns we only have seven, um, um, from turn four and onwards, so that means actually arriving on turn five and onwards, I can have up to 14 battalions, so another like, whole division can come on each turn after turn five so i want air units on here to start airlifting those units up um i don't i was still a bit unclear actually about this bit because essentially 
I need those airfields not so much. I can airlift units on them, but I think really I'll be wanting to um, put bombers on these fields so that my attacks here are a lot more effective. I take all of this um, main part of Norway and then I can concentrate on Narvik. So um, I ign I've ignored Trondheim because I felt it's too much to dirt, dirt and dirt. I need a bigger concentration here. I was tempted to completely ignore Narvik, but I thought, no, if I leave a hefty pile up there, then they're going to be a decent threat. And otherwise, if I ignore that and that, then Norway will just start sending units down here. And after the first term, it's very hard to get units up to there by sea. So um, I've, I've split like that. Uh, I'm ignoring Trondheim. But essentially, it's uh, the peninsula first. Um, strategy uh, holding out in there and then peninsula early Trondheim and then stage into Narvik for the end of the game that is the German plan and just one more thing to say about this now is that um, this is from the Europa series it's my entry into the, the introduction to the Europa series I very much enjoyed the first game but I was aware that Narvik was not typical necessarily of the rest of the series. So I had a look. I have here, um, I don't know if you can see that in the light, their finest hour. So that's Europa Game 5. That's the Battle of Britain and Operation Sea Lion. Now, um, that, so that's my other Europa game. I think I've got in the UK, because I'm in Italy at the moment, in, in the UK I've got, I think I've got Marita McCur and maybe one other. But anyway, I don't have access to them. So I had a look at their finest hour, and in Narvik there's no zones of control. And so I thought, oh, that's very different from Europa. But then I found, reading their finest hour, that in standard Europa, um, you... Uh, here we have um, the headquarters, yes, sorry, the headquarters. So when I bring that headquarters unit on, essentially that can be on the map, and then practically, or in fact, all the rest of that division can be represented in the same hex. It's a bit less for the Norwegians. They're not so, so organised, or they had a bit smaller fighting um, groups. So... Um, in Norway, one hex can have a whole division um, represented by the headquarters unit. In their finest hour, you actually have a, a just a standard unit, which is a divisional unit. And that unit then has a zone of control. So I discovered that it's not so much different from this in, in the sense that in their finest hour, the rest of Europa, a divisional unit has a zone of control. Other units, battalions and... Um, companies and so forth like here don't but the divisional unit does so it's really quite similar to this except that you know you've got your headquarters in here you'd actually physically say put other units uh, other battalions around it um so here it's you've just got the ability to break down a bit more and the zones of control i think perhaps they consider in the the completely broken up terrain of norway they're not going to come in the same way um, you, you know, just to say, right, I've got a zone of control into all of those, have you? You know, put a unit in there and show me. So, so there's that. Um, then there's also, so Europa, it doesn't, this does not look so different from standard Europa. Um, in their finest hour, the air and sea rules look a little bit more detailed, but basically the air rules are basically like this. The sea rules in this are, are sort of are completely abstracted um so that that that's different but you know that's a kind of an add-on it doesn't change anything between narvik and their finest hour so what I, all that to say i'm delighted that this is quite an introduction to europa I'm not so far off it as I, I had wondered standard europa as it were um at first i think the main difference apart from those divisional zones of control will be the armor and anti-tank etc multiplications or divisions etc depending on units so on the unit counters in normal europa you have um extra markings to show if you have uh, modifiers 
was in armour and supported units and so forth. But anyway, that's for another time. I'll stop wittering and um, it, I, I, I much like prefer my setup now because you can see um, using up the space by the necessary charts and tables, it really focuses the map in on Norway. I've you know I barely went over it over the border there, so that is really all of the the field that we are using for this game. And look at all the units that can go on it. Obviously, many will be on these hobbling boxes. Okay, so adios for now, and uh, we'll see how far I get. Um, I'll post an update a bit later.